Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Speed Street. Uh, my name is Connor Daly, clearly a different host voice uh, that normally doesn't do our introductions because our, our pal Joey. Um, Joey is uh, doing uh, dad things, uh, which I respect because as, an, as a dad, as a new dad, first time dad, you got to be like, hey, you make sure that, you know, you do things right, obviously. So uh, Joey's doing things right. He's taking care of his lady. He's, he's taking care of his kid. Um, so it'll be me and Ben today. And Ben, how are you doing? Are you okay? Are we alive? I'm, are we still I'm looking fantastic. at Ross Chastain videos? I'm, my jaw is still on the floor. I have to pick it up here every few minutes every time I still try to work through how that happened. But yeah, man, how are you? Oh, life's good. I couldn't stop watching Ross Chastain ride the wall like a video game character. Um, I... A lot happened in motorsport over the weekend. Um, and, you know, before we get into it, we have a great guest today. Uh, someone that I wanted to get on uh, last week, but he was busy doing famous people stuff. But uh, Will Buxton will be our guest today. Uh, if you don't know Will, obviously we, you know, we want a lot of, uh, you know, motorsport fans in general. Like we, we want to combine the communities. If you're an F1 fan, we want you to be able to listen. If you're a NASCAR fan, we want you to be able to listen. If you're an IndyCar fan, we definitely want you listening. But Will Buxton has done a lot with IndyCar in the past. He's he's been uh he's he's worked for Speed Channel when Speed Channel did Formula One. He's worked for NBC when NBC did Formula One, and then also kind of came over to do a bit of IndyCar stuff as well. Um, and just an incredible uh motorsport mind, an incredible voice. Uh he's in he's obviously a very, very crucial part of the Netflix Drive to Survive show for Formula One. Um, and he works, uh, basically, you know, for Formula One TV now. He does a lot of their, uh, you know, their content, um, at every race, traveling the world. Uh, so we have a great, great chat with him. He's a huge IndyCar fan. Um, and, and very, very excited for you guys to, to, to hear that interview. We could have talked for hours about it, um, because he wants to see IndyCar succeed, you know, more than, more than anyone almost. And, and, and that's, you know, that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to, we're trying to get, our series to that that viral level of formula one that exciting uh you know i want to go to that event type level um but uh but speaking of excitement and speaking of things that uh really are insane um the the nascar race i mean everyone's talking about it, right we got everyone i'm sure all the door bumper clear guys that's all we can talk about i mean it's it's nascar nascar's dream I mean, what they've done social content wise is just the greatest thing I've ever seen. Just milk it, milk it, milk it. I mean, it's it's just it's exactly what you have to do when you have something crazy like that happen. Might it be against the rules in the future? Yes. Might it be like probably not the smartest thing to do? Yes. But it was perfect. Literally, it was perfect. And the last lap, last corner make it into the championship four. I mean, it it was like a storybook ending to that race. It was a storybook social content driver. You had every single motor racing driver tweeting about it, putting it on their Instagram. 60% of the F1 field, all of the IndyCar field almost. E everyone, just even Barstool Sports. I mean, you had so many people. Pat McAfee was like, is this real? Like, I mean, it's, it's moments like that in any racing series. Now, again, that can't happen in IndyCar. It would not happen, <laughs> but any moment like that, we've had wild finishes. I almost compare it. I, I would say the, the move that uh, Brian Herta and, and Alex Zanardi were, were a part of in the corkscrew way back in the champ car days, yep, right? Yep. Where there was the last, court. last second break zone. He fired it off over. Was it illegal? Probably. But like, I would have played that up if there was social media back then. IndyCar, you tweet that sucker out a hundred times. You put it because it's like, oh my gosh, that's crazy. Like what a wild move for open wheel racing. And, and again, we still have some of that stuff happening in IndyCar. Like I would have, like Colton Herta's save, right? This year, Colton Herta's save at the Indy GP Again, it was like the top save of the year for IndyCar's deal. But like that should have been on Sports Center. That should have been on Sports Center top 10. You know what I mean? Like that was one of the most incredible moments in IndyCar. And again, Ross Chastain, number one play, Sports Center top 10. I mean, yep. talk about a dream for NASCAR. I mean, right? I mean, I mean, you must have seen a ton of that stuff as well. 
I was gonna say I I think oh here we go. Um, the breakdown for his like total views on everything. We have thirty million on Twitter, fifty three on TikTok, thirteen on Facebook, and two on YouTube. Absolutely absurd. And like you said, so you're closing in on a hundred million. Right, right. <laughs> that is just absolutely just insane. And considering too, like. Everybody's view of Ross before he did this was still like not like not people great. were still mad at him. Yeah, it's like I was now... even mad at Ross. I I I don't think I liked some of Ross's moves this year. Not not like again. I like Ross as a human, mm-hmm. and I like Justin Marks a ton. He's a great great team owner and great human being. And and the funny part is Ross doesn't have a ton of social media followers. Like really, no. it's not like he had millions of people to tweet it to. The guy's got less followers than me, which is, and is ab- a, uh, absurd. We were talking about that. My roommate and I were talking about that. We're like, his Instagram profile pic is from when he was at college in Xfinity like three years ago or something, two years ago or whatever it was. Does I'm he like, even use Instagram? I don't know. Yeah. Not a whole lot. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's, it's incredible. I, I literally just saw yesterday, I, I looked at Ross's profile. I think he had like 80 something thousand followers. And I looked again today and he's already above 93,000. Yeah. Like the guy, I mean, this, this stuff like that. The, the the viral uh, ability of some of these internet clips, I mean, we just have, there's so much to be taken advantage of from stuff like that. You know what I mean? It's it's whenever you go viral, whether, because again, there was, you know, an, a normal amount of viewership for that race, like, you know, several million people still watch it. Yeah. yeah. But, the, but the back end, right? Like when you have something that happens in that race that gets, it, it you could have had no one watch that race on television. You know what I mean? You might have had 500,000, but if something like that happens that completely encapsulates your mind and you're like, I've never seen that before in my life, that's incredible. I mean, the play off of it is just huge. So I, I, I that was astounding. It was a, it was a prime example of NASCAR immediately, you know, onboard video, uh, spotter communication, other drivers onboard video, I mean, boom, boom, boom. It was all there. And and it was just, it was, people wanted to see it. I wanted to see, I wanted to see more of it. I, I didn't, mm-hmm. I didn't get to watch the race live because I was in California and I, I was doing things with my girlfriend and I, 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 I look at my phone and I'm like, that was the craziest thing I've ever seen. And I even showed her and she was like, well, that's the craziest thing I've ever seen. I was like, yes, it is. I mean, it, it's, it was something that I think we will all remember forever. I think everyone's got, you know, you get into deep into Twitter and cause that whole weekend, like I, I, I hated what Ty Gibbs did like to, to oh, Brandon God. Jones. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't even know the kid, honestly D- don't know him. Uh, but I hate that. I, I, mm. I hated everything about it and, um, good for the fans for letting him know that sucked because again, yeah. moving people is, is NASCAR, right? But I think, and people understand that. I don't think there would have been as much of a row, as much of a you know potential like fight that could break out in the stands, right? If he would have just, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move him up to the second lane, and I'm gonna take the inside, and I'm gonna win by a, by a hair. But he flat out used his car like a missile and destroyed. Brand- mm-hmm. And I mean, honestly. Ty Gibbs didn't need to win that race, right? No. He's already in the championship four. Brandon Jones is his teammate. How do you take that away from your teammate, who is a member of your own team, who, again, you finish one, two as a team, more money for the team in general. Right. Now, there's way less money for the team in general. There's a destroyed car for one of the, for, for your team and someone who uh, now, now can't win the championship, help win the championship for your team. So, right. again, a lot of elements that I hated about that Ty Gibbs thing. And again, I don't know him. I, 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 from what I hear, not a great reputation in the, in the paddock now. Uh, and even before, and he, I mean, again, maybe I, I'm sure NASCAR is thanking the Lord Jesus for, for this guy, because again, Kyle Bush is very popular. Not a lot of people like Kyle Bush as well, but he's a complete icon. Maybe Ty Gibbs is that next guy. I don't know. Who knows? And, uh, Again, like you said about uh, costing your teammate a chance to go in the championship. Now he has to race against three JRM cars in in Phoenix, and that's the team that Brandon Jones is going to next year. So 
what's to say that he isn't maybe not going to wreck him, but it's if he's going to race him hard. Thinking. Yeah. It, it's, it's, it's They're, small mind thinking. You're like, you know what? Yeah. I'm going to win this race. Don't care about anyone else, but it's like, well, guess who's going to know when you're fighting for the championship next week and you're going up against four cars. Cause I'm not going to lie. I see Brandon Jones and all just, I see Brandon Jones. I, I, I really hope with everything in my soul that as soon as Brandon Jones gets around Ty Gibbs, he fires him into that wall because it's just, it's just, I'm sorry. That's just what has to happen because you know, that that's like, not only did you create an enemy that you didn't need, but you also now are going against three people that probably don't like you and you have no help, none. So again, small minded thinking mm -hmm. you let Brandon Jones, you, 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 you race Brandon Jones clean. Maybe he wins. You have a teammate in the championship and everyone's a little happier and you might not have to get wrecked by literally everyone. So, right. Crazy, crazy situation. Um, didn't like seeing that, but again, you ha it gets people tweeting. So uh, uh, this, it doesn't matter if we don't like it. It gets people talking about it, and I think mm -hmm. again, that's it's 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 something that we we've talked about before that I think IndyCar is missing a little bit of. You know, when the Andretti drivers uh, hit each other in Mid Ohio, every single radio message, every single onboard clip. Every everything should have been posted from that. Everything. I don't care. Does, don't ask anyone. You post everything because IndyCar owns everything. You own mm -hmm. the onboards. You own the radio messages. You own everything. You own the series. So doesn't matter if the teams don't like it. Well, it might cause some turmoil. Doesn't matter. You post it because if it gets people talking, it 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 it, it glorifies the sport. It doesn't any any PR is good PR for us right now. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if it's bad. It doesn't matter if people are talking about it as long as they are talking about it. And so I think, again, I hated to see it. I don't like that person now, Ty Gibbs, but I I can't wait to watch the next race. Oh, <laughs> you I'm know so what I mean? Like, yeah. It's insane. So with that being said, do you have championship picks at all for Xfinity and Cup? Uh. I think Noah's going to win by a mile. Um, mm -hmm. At least I hope he does because he deserves it. I mean, if you win that many races, th this is why the kind of chase, the, the chase for the championship for me is still very frustrating because, again, you feel like if it was a regular points championship, the guy would have the championship won already. Mm -hmm. Again, I don't mm -hmm. know the numbers on that. A.J. Elmendinger obviously won the regular season championship, but it, it, it does seem like Noah's been the most dominant driver for the year. Um, but... I I mean, Ty Gibbs is probably going to be fast, which is mm -hmm. annoying, but like mm -hmm. he will be fast uh, and he'll have all the support in the world from um, his his team. Uh, my favorite part of the post race was uh, Noah Gregson's interview, actually, where he said uh, Ty Gibbs racing. I yep. mean, Joe Gibbs racing. <laughs> that was <laughs> no. an all time moment that you had to pick up on that. I literally I almost spat out my drink at the time watching and like my girlfriend didn't know she she didn't like know what that meant she's not a big nascar person but mm -hmm. i was just like let me explain this to you in 30 seconds when this is right. over <laughs> did you see when um it wasn't this tv interview but there's some journalists interviewing him like after that on pit road and noah walked by brandon and tapped him on the shoulder said hey beat his ass yeah exactly <laughs> As he was going, like, but, oh i was dying because you had austin hill and freaking myatt snyder oh, whatever, wrestling my on the ground God. brandon jones should have been like literally high kicking Ty Gibbs's head. Like it was, it was, you know, I, I don't even know what Austin. Hill and that Martin was probably the biggest about. hit I've ever seen in motorsports. Like really? Yes. Like what, I, which hit did you Austin absolutely smack in mind? I don't know if you saw the, the, oh, I, didn't see any, I didn't see anything. They, so they kind of caught a glimpse of them on the ground and then they showed it. I think on the next on Sunday during the pre-race Austin, uh, so Maya went up to Austin, like didn't want to talk to him, just kept saying back away, back, back away. Maya kept running his mouth. Austin turns around, just full extends, punches him, like absolutely really? sends him to the ground and jumps on him. I love that. Yeah. Good. I'll see if I can. Yeah, it was, that was, it, he was out cold. It had to have been. But like, again, it, 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 it uh, in racing, it, you're not out there to make friends. I, I don't care. I don't care what is going on. We're not out there to be friends. Like, we as IndyCar and drivers need to understand that if you want to go and tell someone that they suck or or that they that you had a problem with their move, you absolutely do it. 
I'm sorry. There's none of this big time. We're not the coolest people in the in in the paddock. We we don't have the biggest sword at the table. If we want to get angry at someone, you just go over there and do it because that's what people love to see emotion. So I again, NASCAR had a dream weekend for content. Absolute dream weekend for content. Love what they're doing. Maybe there's a big mafia behind it and they all controlled it. And now there is they've got a great, great championship hype. I don't know, mm-hmm. but it's 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 astounding. Uh and then the the Formula One race in Mexico. I mean, nothing really happened. Max yeah, won. Yeah. Uh I didn't watch it at all. I mean, I watched I watched the start. I watched the first few laps. Um, and you know, Daniel Ricardo, great race, good friend of the show, even mm-hmm. though he hasn't been on the show, but I like Daniel because <laughs> he's a friend of the show. Um, great to see him have a strong race. McLaren double points finish. Um, but uh, but yeah, we'll get into F1 with Will. Uh, I want to get right into that interview because again, that we, we talk a little bit about the NASCAR stuff. We we kind of we got into the Ross Chastain thing. And so now um, I would like to introduce everyone to my good friend, uh, Mr. Will Buxton. All right. We have an incredible guest, uh, a man who is from over the seas, a man who I have met many years ago, a man who has commentated on many of my motor races before as I was a young lad uh, and even as an adult lad, um, a man who is very famous on a Netflix television show. Um, He is a widely known Formula One pit lane uh, media legend, Will Buxton. Thank you so (laughs) much for being here. Uh, How are you doing today, my friend? I am exceptionally good, mate. How are you? (laughs) Well, I'm good. I'm good. We had an incredible weekend in uh, in Austin, Texas for the United States Grand Prix. Um, We did. It as was, much as we can remember of it. Exactly. We got pretty loose right out the gate <laughs> on the first night. Um, <laughs> but that's what motor racing is all about. Um, Will, I have I have a lot of questions for you because I find you a fascinating, uh, basically a fascinating mix of your love for motorsport. Because we on this show, we love IndyCar. We, we, yeah. we're, we're trying to help IndyCar get to that next level. Uh, and as someone who you also love IndyCar, like we know that you've done some commentary for IndyCar and stuff before, but F1 has taken off on a rocket ship across the world and especially in the United American colonies. And (laughs) like, do you, how do you feel about it overall? Because it's gotta be great. I mean, you can't go to dinner without taking 400 pictures, but like how, <laughs> like, this is a very broad question. How do we get IndyCar to that level? Oh boy. <laughs> uh, h- how long's the show? Um, long enough. May. So how do, how do I feel about, about Formula One getting huge in America? I'm so there's part of me that is so glad that it's finally happening. Right. So glad. And there's part of me that's so pissed off that I no longer broadcast to the, to America because yeah. You know, I broadcast with Speed Channel and with NBC, and they were great days. You know, I spent nearly a decade broadcasting to the States. It's how I got to broadcast IndyCar as well with NBC. Um, and and I know the NBC family, and I know how much they put into Formula One and their love for it. And so to kind of not be part of a crew that's broadcasting Formula One as it's becoming really successful in the States, I, it just like it, it kind of breaks my heart because I wish I was still doing it. But then to be mm. a part of of like the Netflix show and to be a part of F1 TV, which I know a lot of people in the States watch their watch their F1 through is uh, it's amazing, man. And it's. You know, when we were with NBC, we were lucky if we got like 500,000 um, uh, viewers for a race. And now ESPN's topping over, you know, 2 million a race, which is just insane when you think about how much it's grown, you know, four times the size that it was in just a couple of years. Um, it's mind blowing. It's absolutely mind blowing. And I think to say, oh, all you need is a Netflix is <laughs> it's not it's not the silver bullet. You know, um, it's not going to be this thing that is a universal um, kind of success formula for every championship and for for every sport. I know everyone, you know, everyone's doing it. You've got, uh, I think, tennis and golf are doing it with the same company that do the Formula One one. And and um, I know that MotoGP did one, mm. Moto, and, but it wasn't it wasn't this huge success and it didn't suddenly launch MotoGP to new audiences. So. There's something I think very unique about what 
Netflix did with, with, with Formula One, with Drive to Survive. And I think maybe a lot of that comes from the fact that Formula One for a long time was a little bit closed off. You know, yeah. it was a little bit secretive. It was difficult to engage. It was difficult to get into. So to have this program that got behind the visor and got, you know, underneath the overalls and said, okay, these are the guys and these are the heroes and this is why they're amazing. And it kind of opened them up a bit. It was, I think, you know, really opened the sport up a bit. Um, and you know what it's like, and you've seen the change and you remarked about it in in Austin, just how different the paddock felt now to how it was like, even five years ago. It's completely different. What's really interesting, I think, as well, is like maybe the magic of it comes from this, right? Timing is everything in life, right? Yeah. And, and and if you see the way that show, when it premiered, right? Like when people, when life kind of shut down a little bit and and then people needed stuff to watch and they're like, well, hey, Formula One is really cool. Because to be fair, like it, it is, it's a it's a lifestyle and it's a sport that really not many people are are even allowed into. Uh, and then, and then it's, it's tough to be a part of that. It, it seems to be a very elite community. So it's like, Whoa, Hey, like this is like a now inside look at what is going on. And so you're right. Like maybe, maybe timing was everything. And again, once you launch into the stratosphere, guess what? I've seen gravity. It keeps you rotating around the earth, like the sun and the moon yeah. and all those things. And so now you're in the stratosphere. So you're, you're up there. And yes, yeah, it's, it's it's like it's like sporting Kardashians, isn't it? Yeah. Like when you so, get a peek yeah. behind the velvet rope, um, you know, you're allowed. Because the Kardashians have been famous forever, and, and exactly, like, but now they're famous but, forever. But it was what? Why? Why did that work? Because it was yeah. this opulent lifestyle that no one actually lived and felt completely detached from reality, which I guess Formula One has for a long time. And then when you see behind the rope and you realize it's just a family who. Okay, have more money than God, but uh, <laughs> you know, uh, I just you know they're having stupid family arguments about the same old crap that we do. Okay, cool. Then we roll that to Formula One, and it's a similar kind of thing. Look behind the velvet rope, it's people. It's yeah. it's 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 you know people who are chasing dreams and and wanting to achieve things. It's heartache. It's success. It's failure. It's it's you know it's it's every the driver sport. personalities. Like like I think there are great yeah. driver personalities that have never been taken advantage of until this era, right? Like yeah. we now see people that are you know you you'd always see like obviously I, I spent years in the Formula One paddock trying to be a Formula One driver myself, and you see. The, you know, the the passionate Spanish fans, the passionate, you know, the Tifosi, you see all these certain fan bases, but now you have people that are like going to war for their guy on the internet. You know what I mean? Like their driver, whatever it is, F1 Twitter might be one of the most toxic places on the planet, but like, it's just people, people are really passionate about supporting their team, their driver, whatever it is. And it, it I'm, I'm very very interested to see if another form of motorsport can take that type of leap that Formula One did. I, I honestly don't know if it's possible. Like we want a Netflix show, obviously an IndyCar. I think it would be great. Could be amazing. No big deal. But I don't know if it has the same effect unless it's promoted in the same way or else it has the same type of kick. You know what I mean? It's it's interesting, isn't it? Because with Formula One, the drivers were quite secretive. You didn't know much about them. And in the old days, they were very good. Couldn't even get a text them. back. <laughs> Bingo. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let, let alone a pass for the weekend. Um, yeah, exactly. and, <laughs> um, but they were they were kind of, you know, they were closeted and they were told what to say by their press officers. So there's two things that's happened here. There's the advent of social media and drivers being much more open. There's the advent of the Netflix show as well and seeing behind the curtain as to who these guys really are. And that honesty that was then you know, related back to them by the fan base as being something that was good and positive. Mm. And thank you so much because now we see who you are. And that was all a mistake with the Netflix show because they wanted to focus on Mercedes and Ferrari in the championship and Mercedes and Ferrari season one just went, wait, you want to come into engineering meetings? And yeah. like here are, no, get out. We don't, we don't want a thing to do with this. So they had to look for something else. And they found Daniel Ricciardo and they found Gunther Steiner and they found, you know, these great characters and they brought them out. And then Mercedes and Ferrari after season one went, well, shit, we need a piece of this because this is this yeah. is incredible and we love it. So that's how that worked. But I think it came from a place of where people didn't know too much about the drivers and the sport had always felt closed off. IndyCar, by comparison, is not closed off. You mm. pay your $100 on the Indy 500 and you get paddock access. You get to meet the drivers. You guys are engaging with the fans already through 
you know, not just through social media, but actual human interaction on a race weekend. You go to an IndyCar race, you want to meet Connor Daly, you can meet Connor Daly, <laughs> you know? Yep, I'm go, right here. <laughs> exactly, but you go to a Formula One race, you want to meet Charles Leclerc. Well, no shot. Good, good luck, sir. Yeah. You know, so so you're, you're already, that that hurdle isn't something that has to be jumped in IndyCar because you already have that personal relationship with the fans which I think is one of IndyCar's real strengths is that it is so community led and that it is, you are able to go and touch and meet and see your heroes. I love that about IndyCar. I love it. But then I, yeah, when, no, it go ahead, TV, like, when it, when it, yeah. When it, when it <laughs> comes to a TV show, well, where's the velvet rope? What are you trying to yeah. jump behind? What are you trying to bring out? What are you trying to show? So if they're IndyCar are going to do a show like this, then they have to find their own angle because repetition Simply doing it for the sake of doing it isn't going to wash and it isn't going to be successful because it isn't going to engage in the same way. So have a TV series, but if you try and do exactly what Drive to Survive has done, it's not going to work because IndyCar doesn't need to do what the Formula One show did do, which is to open up the paddock. IndyCar paddock is already open, so you've got to find a different angle, I think. Yeah, it's it's a very curious uh, – It's a it's an interesting – diagram if you look at it right because like a lot of some of the drivers actually recently on the indycar side like i'll say th they have actually presented the idea to the series like hey i think people have too much access because like maybe that is something that helps but to be fair i don't think we can limit that right like we're already begging for people to be there and like the and any attention that we can get and to be and and thankfully our paddock is very open it's a great environment you can get you can usually get what you need to get people in and out and do whatever it is. But what, like, is there, I still think there is plenty that the people don't know, right. That are, that, that yeah. would be behind the scenes. Like whether that's, you know, again, they're not going to get people in engineering meetings like or real engineering meetings. That is like, we've done fake engineering meetings for little YouTube videos and stuff like that. But like, maybe there's, since a lot of us live here in Indianapolis, right. The show costs less to make because we're not traveling the world. You know, yep. we're in North America. You have, um, you know, a lot of the drivers here in Indy. What are we doing outside of the track? What are we doing at the track? What are we doing in the bus slot in the month of May? I think you could do an entire show on the three weeks of May. You know what I mean? Like totally. Yeah. And, and that is something that I think maybe it's a teaser, right? Hey, we do one show. We have a little bit less of a budget, but we start May 1. And May 1 to May 31st, that is like just full of, because we are the busiest we've ever been. And yeah. maybe that's something that helps because maybe some TV producers, maybe they're not sold on everything, but like the Indy 500 is still, I mean, would you agree, still an upper echelon event for sure? I think it's it's one of the top two or three races in the world. You know, it's, it's Le Mans, it's the Indy 500. Um, I don't think you can find a Formula One Grand Prix that actually compares with either one of them in terms no. of what it means as a one-off event. Um, Absolutely. Everyone says Monaco, but I don't no. agree. Monaco's it's not it's not a race in in the way that the 500 or, or Le Mans is a race. Um, and the prestige aligned to that, the achievement of of what it means. You know, you don't get a big shiny ring when you win the Monaco Grand Prix. Nope. You don't. You don't. You don't get a trophy that is you know, literally one story of a house uh, <laughs> yeah. if you win the Monaco Grand Prix, but you do if you win Le Mans and you do if you win the Indy 500. So, mm. you know, I think, I think that's, 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 that's a big thing. Um, yeah. The month of May could work or what it has to do is it has to find a rivalry yes, and it has to yeah. find a real intense rivalry. And you know what, that may not come between the drivers. Cause I know for the most part, the drivers will get on well, but it might be between Michael Chip Ganassi Chip and McLaren and, right now. Yeah. Well, there you go, Chip. Yeah. yeah, Chip and Zach, yeah. or it's 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 Chip, Michael, Roger, and Zach. Maybe it focuses on the teams. I don't know, but it. I think because Indy maybe is such a, a happy place, all the drivers seem to get on. Maybe you need to find that needle. Maybe you need to find that one thing that people don't not automatically associate IndyCar with, which is sort of maybe there's two guys that really hate each other, and yeah. then you know you have you have your your heel and your baby face, and then you have something that people can sink their teeth into. Um, yeah. You know, I watched during, during COVID, I, I was watching cheer, which is the <laughs> the Netflix show all about the cheerleaders. Yep. Right now. I didn't <laughs> think I would ever be watching a show about cheerleading, but I, I was 
pulling for 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 the guys <laughs> and not for the guys who were featured in the first season i was i was pulling for the other guys because i i preferred them i preferred their team i thought they were cool <laughs> um and uh and i've ended up sort of following the coach um because i just thought he was he, he was great um but that's the strength of those kind of shows and that Absolutely. all came down to a sport i didn't really understand or even know was a sport and then the 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 rise and the fall and 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 you know, pull in for somebody. But the emotional was, connection. Yeah, there was this needle yeah. between them. I, I, I love that. So, yeah, I mean, look, how do we translate what has happened in Formula One over to IndyCar? I think, mate, look, it, that is a that is a massive question. And as I said at the start, how long have you got? But when yeah. I came and, and started with Formula One five years ago, um, I'd been with NBC, I'd been with with Speed Channel, I'd, I'd made network television. And when I signed up to work for Formula One and they said, we're going to start a digital channel. And what we want you to do is we want you to do stuff for us on Twitter, stuff for us on YouTube and stuff for us on F1 TV. And I said, fine, but under one condition. They said, what's that? I said that saying it's for the internet will never be part of the conversation. I'm not here to make internet content right i'm here to make network television i don't care if it goes out on the internet yeah but if it's not good enough to go out on network television and it's not good enough for, for our channels and that has to be like your baseline um and from that high quality content yeah yeah, you yeah. Know, simply going oh you know, the, the edit's not quite right oh it doesn't matter it's just for the internet sorry piss off no. yeah your fans deserve more than that they deserve everything you do to be the best you can do. Network quality every single time. And that's what we've done with everything we've done in Formula One. And what we do on the digital side, so for F1 TV or F1 Digital, Twitter, YouTube, now TikTok, you know, and, and F1 TV, is essentially create free-to-air television um, for those that don't have the free-to-air TV. So if you're, you know, because if, 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 if you're a, a new fan and you've only watched F1 through Drive to Survive, yeah, you're not going to be subscribing to, in the UK or Italy or Germany, you're not going to be subscribing to Sky Sports to watch yeah. the F1. So how do you get those new eyeballs? Well, that's what we were doing on the digital side. By creating engaging content and having it out there regularly, people who were following people that followed F1 and somebody would retweet something that F1 had made. We did a post-race show that was free to watch on Twitter. You know, you've hosted uh, yeah, it. Yeah, um, did it. Great time. Yeah, Great fun, right? Great yeah. fun. Um, but that's free. So yep. you're following somebody who's following the F1 account. They retweet the show. All of a sudden, you're watching a free F1 show. And you're like, oh, this is quite fun. What's this? You might watch the race then. Um, and that was the whole concept behind it was give the internet little nuggets, little snippets, things they can watch for free that will get them excited. Remember the, 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 the girly channels, like the, the naughty channels on, on cable. And they used to give you no. like a 10, like you, you, <laughs> and, and they used to give you like a 10 minute free view before oh. they, before they locked for the night. Right. Yes. That's kind of what, what we do. Is Interesting we, comparison. Yeah. <laughs> you create the 10 minute free view to yes. get people excited about it. So that then when it goes fuzzy at midnight, they yeah. want to steal their parents' credit card and sign up. Like that's that's ultimately what we do. I find that fascinating. We're gonna have to get something like that going in IndyCar. But I <laughs> I think what's what's fascinating about that is you mentioned like the internet a lot, right? And there's a lot of uh content that's being that's being consumed. Right now, people want more things that have to do with Formula One. Honestly, yeah. I think they want more things that have to do with NASCAR. Like NASCAR. Totally. I mean, even even all the Formula One drivers over the weekend, they saw Ross Chastain ride the wall at Martinsville. They thought it was the coolest thing ever, right? Like, and and, and to be fair, if there are cool IndyCar moments, I do believe that some people, you know, tweet about it or or or, or do something about it. But but the awareness of that move all across the motorsport spectrum, right? I think all of us pay attention to those the three giant motorsport uh you know the the big players right indycar f1 nascar and i and is it is it purely because of the internet like do you think that what the internet has done with netflix with formula one's production team with all of them do you think just just literally injecting like an electroshock type situation into 
producing good YouTube content, producing good post-race live shows, producing good Instagram content. Is that something that you think is, let's say, the easiest step for IndyCar to take? Because again, I know we could sit here and talk for hours about what IndyCar needs to do because we, we love the sport and we want to yeah. make it better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But is, it, is, it, is something as simple as that, does that get us to at least a, another level? Um, mate, I, I, at its heart, marketing. Marketing mm. is what IndyCar needs more than anything because I yes. would argue, and I, I know you'd agree with me, IndyCar has one of, if not the best racing products on the face of the earth. Absolutely. Go to any race, any weekend, 15, 18, 20 drivers in with a shot at winning. I, As a fan of racing, I don't know how you cannot love that. Yeah. I don't know how you can't be engaged with that. And so every F1 on... driver, every F1 driver that I talked to at Austin said the same thing. Like, oh, man, the racing looks great. It's like the product yeah. is not the problem. The product's not the problem. Um so ultimately, and you know, I, I I've spent time in the IndyCar paddock, and 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 people laugh about it. They say we're the best racing that no one watches. Yeah. How can that? How can that be your tagline? Like, yeah. how can that be? It's it's and it breaks my heart because I yeah. love IndyCar. Um, it you need you need marketing. You need to invest in promoting your your brand, in promoting your product. Now, look, if IndyCar wants to be just an American championship. That that is only being pushed out to America, then the figures that it's making from a stateside only broadcast are nowhere near as high as they as they can be and as they should be for racing that's that's that good. Honestly, exactly. if, we, if we look at it. So how do you get new eyeballs? How do you get people to engage? Well, in this social media world, you know, we've, you talk about marketing. Part of marketing is your social media push. It's your social media reach, and you can't just rely on the drivers. Mm. Or the teams to do that. As the promoter of the sport, you need to be out there pushing and promoting your your brand. It's what we do in Formula One. We're a very small team, but you know there is a a constant content plan. You know where even in the off season, the guys you know running F one's digital platform are pushing you know seven eight things a day onto their Instagram feed, onto the Twitter feed, whatever it might be. Whether that's videos of oh here's the top ten moments from. 1986 or you know, whatever yeah. it might be, there's always something to engage, you know, on this day, this happened. Let's remember this race that happened here, whatever it is, just constantly trying to engage, constantly trying to pick as if, even if you pick off one new set of eyeballs that thinks that looks cool. And I want to watch that. Right. Yeah. But in, if you're going to grow, it's like, you can't buy a plant, right. And leave it in the sun and expect it to grow. You have to, you have to put it in fertilizer and water it, and you have to give it the nutrients and every chance of blossoming. Because if you just leave it out in the sun, it will wilt and it will die, no matter how beautiful that plant is. And that, and that ultimately is, you know, it's, 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 it's it sounds so basic and so simple, yeah. um, but that's. It could, gotta, it could be it. Do. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, you know, we, we did have like, as much as we, we talk a lot about on this podcast about what we can do and, and how we can grow. And I think a lot of the drivers for sure, after as speaking to a lot of them in Austin as well, everyone's kind of on the same page because we, we saw Austin, we saw what was going on there and you kind of, you start to do more research. Right. And I would say even now, like you look at the formula two drivers, I would say most of the formula two drivers, like I would say, let's say half the field almost have more Instagram followers than like most of the IndyCar field. You know what I mean? It's, it's like, it's like whoa the 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 dribble down like the 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 feed effect of like even F three like it's like F one F two F three that whole that whole program is growing wow. and so again that for for IndyCar to then have like like our Indy Lights series is growing and I think the Road to Indy is quite a strong series with great scholarships available amazing but imagine amazing. that growing even more like. I, I met a uh, young Matteo Nanini the other day. He's a, he was an F2 racer, right? He's trying to be an American now. And like, he was asking me some, for some advice. And I was like, I, I wish I could tell you what the, how to raise money for a feeder series, because it's just, it's hard. But like, yeah. imagine if you, if you continue to grow this IndyCar, you know, this, this, this IndyCar plant, as we'll go with, you know, that, that helps everything along the way. So I think again, uh, yeah, the, the rising tide lifts all ships. And I think, exactly. particularly, but I think that is true for all racing. So with the success of, of drive to survive, 
you would hope that as that raises Formula One, it raises everything around it. So it helps raise Formula Two and Formula Three. I think I hope that it it would help to raise IndyCar at the same time. All you know, because it's a recognition of racing, full stop. And exactly. what heroes you guys are to have that skill and ability to jump into a race car and do what you guys do. That is why we do what we do in reporting it. It's why as fans, we watch what you do because we love it. You do this thing that we can't do. And and yeah. we <laughs> stellify you for it. And and you know, look, I know that 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 uh, IndyCar has only just gone through a, a very new transition with a very new ownership. And so I have no idea what is in place, you know, for the future as they, you know, obviously, you know, get to grips with what it is they have, what it is they own and, and how they want to take that, adapt it and, you know, and, and, and grow it. Um, but all, all I can speak to is, is my experience of what we've done with Formula One. And let's not forget, five years ago, Formula One had zero social media presence. You put up a video of anything to do with Formula One, it was taken down. There was no YouTube channel. There was no yes. Twitter account. There was no marketing department. There was definitely not a digital department creating yeah. its own content. So in five years, and yeah, look, it's easy to be the quickest growing sport in the world on social media when you had zero presence five years ago. Yeah. But to still be that now when you're competing with the NFL, the NHL, NBA, I think shows the strength of what has been done. Have we done it perfectly? No. Are there things that we could change or could do differently? Yes. Is there any reason why IndyCar shouldn't be doing the same thing? None at all. Yeah. Absolutely none. I mean, it's, and, and it's to, wild to think about. Five years. I mean, it, it's 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 crazy. Ben, you have anything for Will here? Um, More kind of related. I had some questions more F1-wise, but do you think – dipping more into investing in American races is a good idea right now. Cause you're at two this year and you're going to three. Do you want to see more or do you think that's going to be too much? So here's, here's the thing. Um, there's been a really big debate about this on social media over the last few days, mainly picked up by, by Sean Kelly, who's the the statistician yeah. that we work with in, in formula one. And he made a really good point, right? Which He's is a smart from, guy, <laughs> very smart guy Yeah, from London. Right. If, if you, if you fly like, an hour and a half in pretty much any point west. So northwest, north, northwest, you know, southwest, south, south you know, all the way. Uh, so east. My, my map's always been terrible. East. <laughs> anyway, east. Um, then you get within Europe to two racetracks in Italy, uh, the racetrack we go to in Spain, um, Germany, Austria, Belgium, Netherlands, uh, where else am I missing out? Austria, everywhere. I say Austria, can't remember. Every, yeah. everywhere. So there's like 10, 11 tracks that you can get to within an hour and a half of flying out of London, right? If you go to Austin for the Formula One Grand Prix, how many hours are it going to take you to fly to Vegas? How many hours That'd are going to take you? That'd be solid two, I would how say. Many hours, how many hours are it going to take you to fly to Miami? Another two, probably. I would right. say, maybe so, hour and so, 45. So the gap between those three Grand Prix is larger than between any of the multiple races within Europe. So if you're looking at it from a purely territorial basis of of how far those races are set apart, the time codes that they're in, you know, they might as well be in different countries because just because yeah. America is th th this gargantuan entity of a country, it's not. <laughs> one place yeah it's multiple time zones it's multiple cultures it's multiple experiences so why shouldn't different parts of the country have a grand prix like the experience of the miami grand prix the experience of the austin grand prix and what will be the experience in vegas will be wholly different as different as going to silverstone or singapore yeah oh, you yeah. know and that's the re and that is the genuine reality of it would I like to see four or five Grand Prix stateside if it meant that the sport was taken off in America and, you know, we didn't lose too many of the of the tracks that are really great, then, you know, so long as the the audience was there and, and was loving and appreciating it, sport grows, sport evolves. You know, I wish we were racing in Africa. I wish we could go back to South Africa. You know, that'd be, that would be yeah. really cool um, and be a, a full world championship. But I just think it's honestly, I think it's, I think it's great. I think it's great that there's a desire there, that there's a want there that, you know, I was walking through Atlanta airport and our team kit is made by Alpha Tauri, the, the clothing department of the race team. 
Yeah. And I have this cream hoodie with the smallest little Alpha Tauri logo in the middle. And I'm <laughs> and I'm going through TSA at Atlanta Airport. And the guy's like, and the guy's like, Sir, you want to upgrade that hoodie for a Red Bull sweater? And that's not his accent. I can't do an Atlanta accent. <laughs> and I'm just like, and I went, I went, I need a I need a what? And he was just like a Red Bull sweater. And I'm like, oh, because I'm wearing Alpha Tauri. Shit. <laughs> wow. Okay. It's incredible. Amazing. There's the knowledge. Like. Where did that come from? You know, rewind even three years. No one's gonna say anything. Yeah, and now it's like, where, where did that come from? Like, it's a, it, it's incredible. Honestly, it, just it is incredible. It's the most fascinating thing that I think I've ever seen. Only because, like, that was a world that I spent so much time in, right? And like, mm. I went to the U.S. Grand Prix when Alex Rossi was in the U.S. Grand Prix. You know what I mean? Like, yes. I went to the U.S. Grand Prix. Back when I was trying to be, you know, I was like an unofficial slash sort of like test driver there, and like. You you see it and like any of the F one drivers I have I like me and Daniel Ricardo had a great time out at like 2014 after the race no one recognized him you know what I mean no one has no any one idea who anyone was not a clue and now it's like they can't even walk to the bathroom I I every driver that I talk to in Austin never stopped walking we just kind of walked together and wherever they were going and we talked for about 15 seconds that's about it but like. That's how crazy it's become. And again, you talk to people. I was in California for Halloween over the weekend. Walk into a Halloween party. Boom, there's Christian Horner. He's just a guy dressed up as Christian Horner. And his girlfriend is Christian Horner's wife. And I'm like, oh, who would have thought? Like the first costume that I see is someone dressed up as Christian Horner. I'm like, this is literally, this is downtown like Hollywood. Like I'm like, are you? It was, it was just so mind-blowing. It's like. It's something going viral. It, it's 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 the it's the cool thing. If you're not watching Formula One right now, I mean, might as well be a person that doesn't even exist. Like it's 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 crazy. There it's are there, last weekend there were five million people consuming motorsport between F1 and NASCAR. Like, at, and that was against the NFL. So like, yeah. it, I I cannot remember a time when motorsport in America was as successful as it is right now. So and now we gotta, is the we got to get involved. <laughs> exactly. Now is the time. Yeah. Now is yeah. absolutely. If there has never been a time more, more, more perfectly suited than to to make that push, to make that investment, and say, right, you know, we everything's moving forward. If if we don't adapt and change and grow and move with it, we will be left behind. It's a and scary that, thought. Like it, it really is. Cause, cause that, that is a reality. Like if you don't, if you don't get on this train, guess what? That train's going to leave. Like yeah. that train's going to leave you at the station. You know what but I mean? I'm sure I'm sure you look, you know, <laughs> Penske entertainment group are smart people. You know, they must know. And they will of course know that this is, you know, the route that they have to take because, because I hope so. <laughs> they come on, man. They must. They must. They must. I know, but, but, but here's the thing is we all love Roger, right? Roger is a legend of our, of our sport. He's a legend of the motor racing community. One of the smartest businessmen probably in our paddock. Right. But I, I also look at what we've done this year and I think there was growth. Right. But I also look at who came into this series you have Jimmy Johnson as a full-time driver. You have Roman Grosjean as a full-time driver. You have, you know, all of this excitement. I thought the Indy 500 was absolutely electric this year. You know what I mean? Uh, you have it looked amazing. Incredible. And so I almost think that a lot of the momentum was actually because of what we as drivers were trying to do for the series and, like, some of the bigger names, what they brought to the series. You know what I mean? So, like, we, we just – I just want to see a more – slightly more unified, like, just – a, a unified effort to be like, hey, we get it. Like, and it, it's actually okay to admit that we might not be doing all the things that we can right now. And look, that's totally fine. Just copy what F1 is doing. Literally, like, don't be afraid to copy what other people are doing. I, I would say that, you know what I mean? Just to get things going. Like, hey, there's an example. It works as someone who tries to look at data when I race, right? When I look mm -hmm. at my teammates' data, He's doing something different to me. Maybe it's faster. Guess what I'm going to do? Try to do that. You know what I mean? So there's a lot that kind of aligns there. And I just, I do hope it's it's hard to know what's going to happen because we can't predict the future. We're not a bunch of fortune tellers, but 
I know us as drivers, and I think a lot of the teams are busting their butts to to try to promote this series. And I just hope that we can all do it together in a successful fashion. Because again, we have a great product. Here. Yeah, you have a great product, an amazing product. And and look, as you say, and the comparison to to driving the car is a, is a strong one because you don't know if you've got the same equipment underneath you you know, um, that's had the exactly. same investment. And obviously, you know, Formula One has a pretty big pot of money to sit on. And, you know, it hasn't come from just, you know, scrapping together, rubbing together two dimes to to make yeah. it work. There's There's been a solid and serious investment in in what we've done on the digital side. Um, so obviously- You got to spend throw, money to make money. Spend money to throw, make money. If you're going to throw your car in at full tilt and hope it, hope it holds- you, yeah, I hope the investment's been there, but you won't know if you can you can hold it through the corner until, you, as you said, until you give it a go. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, look, look, I don't want this to sound like I'm having a, listen, I'm not having a dig at IndyCar. I love IndyCar. No, I exactly. It, and, I think it's the I, most fantastic we championship. Yeah. In, in, I think it's the most fantastic championship in, in, the, in the world. All, I, all I'm saying, I'm just coming from the experience of what we've, what we've done in Formula One, where we've come from, where we've come to. Um, and, you know, those learnings and those understandings of, of how it's worked and why it's worked and and what we've been able to create in that time is something that, as you say, when you look at the data, when you look at those, those, those data points of how it's worked and why it's worked um, let's hope that there's, there's learnings in there for, for, you know, any other racing championship in the world um, to let's say Le Mans, you know, which doesn't have the same viewership that it used to have to pick that up. I mean, we talk about, the stories over the weekend we talk about nascar and chastain and the, the it's crazy bonkers you know yeah. insane brilliance of that um the other thing that I, th- I think caught a lot of people's attention was you know ferrari launching their their new le mans car oh yeah first so time cool. back in the in the in the premier category there how cool is that like yeah. wh- it's the greatest time for us uh in racing i think you know a, a formula one that is has fully gone global you got a world endurance championship that has got Ferrari and huge names coming back and you know Persian BMW Porsche, yeah BMW yeah. and you know all of this you know going back to Le Mans again total fever um you know you've got IndyCar which has got the greatest depth of field possibly in its history oh yeah um you've got uh you've got NASCAR which is which is crazy exciting at the moment okay a couple of issues with the new car but like crazy mad exciting and a brilliant run for the championship you know as it always seems to be but you know Look at look at Christopher Bell's season. Where was he thirtieth, yeah. and and now he's he's probably favourite to take this thing. Like it's it's unbelievable. And and <laughs> you look at, at 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 every single area of of where motorsport is right now, and it's 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 just brilliant. It just brings so much joy. Um, and all you want to see is those figures for every championship rise. You want to see them go up because I want everyone to enjoy this thing that we enjoy i want to be able to walk down the street and somebody you know somebody go somebody be talking about oh you see the grand prix at the weekend oh, yeah. isn't max verstappen brilliant and then somebody else turn around and you know go yeah he's great and someone else say oh yeah but lewis is the greatest of all time and then someone else turn around and go no nah, i think scott dixon to give him a run for his money you know that's yeah. what i want to see you know exactly that's, that's what i want to hear i mean it, it's such it is an exciting you are exactly right. When with because we don't talk about a ton about sports car racing on this podcast, but we we probably will at some point as well. But you're right. In the World Endurance Championship, you have all these massive manufacturers. You have uh, there is truly a massive need for motorsport apparently across this the the whole platform, and we love that because that's what puts food on our table. Um, and, 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 and it's what, it's what, like, if I go to the internet every day and I see something new and cool happening in racing, I love that. And I think there are more people that I don't care if it's in WEC, dirt racing, NASCAR racing, IndyCar racing, like there are 5 million people consuming motorsport last weekend. How are not, how are more people not watching IndyCar as well? I'm sorry. I don't know how that's not, I don't know how it's possible. It's like when, um, when they launched extreme E and I was like, wait, hold up. So you're going to do a rally. Wait, no, it's more like the Dakar. Wait, but you're yeah. going to have four cars on track at the same time. Are you mad? And then, yeah. and, and then watched it and was like, oh, it turns out they are completely yeah. mad. And, and I loved it. It's yeah. great. Bring it on. But as you say, look, five million people watching racing last weekend. Yeah. Got to get those. <laughs> let's, let's head back to the Wolf of Wall Street. Got to get those numbers up. Those are rookie get numbers. Get them up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got to get those numbers up. Ben, do you have a last question for Will here? Um, I think you talked about five years ago, not having a social a department, a marketing department, having that big pre- pre- presence in F1. Um, I think 
increasing that and dumping money that has really impacted like that kind of 18 to 35 demographic or whatever yeah. that is Gen Z and millennials or whatever. That's one thing I've noticed as somebody that's in Gen Z is just the amount of people that are come up and be like, man, are you an F1? Are you an F1? I was like, yeah, I've been watching this since I was eight. No big deal, whatever. But <laughs> um, <laughs> what school. like, you're right. <laughs> like how, like, have you seen that shift of more young people, like just consuming F1, even at the track and coming up to you just overall? Oh yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's, I think that's, that's, that's one of the strongest parts of it. And I know that the guys, you know, back in F1, have got all of the the data and, and that's one of the things with social, you know, is you can, you can see who's following you and you know, the age and the demographic of, of, of who's consuming what and when, and for how long, but you see it at the racetrack. Um, it's, it's, it's a more diverse crowd than I've ever seen. Um, it's, you know, it used to be kind of the your middle aged bubble hat wearing, yeah. You know, <laughs> European and now European guy, and now it's international. It's men and it's women. It's different races. It's it's different ages. You know, from the young to the very old. People who've been watching it for thirty seconds. People who've been watching it for thirty, forty, fifty years. Um, it is so diverse. It is such a wide audience. And, and I love that. I love that for the sport um, because it's this thing that we all love. And so when you see other people loving that thing that you love, it just, it feels, it feels your soul, you know, and, <laughs> and uh, it's, 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 it's great. Uh, it just makes me happy. It's wild, man. I, I literally just saw on an Instagram story yesterday, like uh, a girl that I know, a friend of mine, literally just paid, you know, $8,000 for tickets to the Las Vegas race. And I, and she was like, Oh, should I resell these? I'm like, Whoa. that is, I was like, what? <laughs> First of all, I, I still, the, the expense of that is crazy. But again, this is like late twenties, early thirties, people who are like, I'm going to go to this F1 race because it's, it's going to be cool. You know what I mean? It's like, I got it. We got to get that. Like It's, it's if you spend eight thousand, can you imagine spending eight thousand dollars on an IndyCar weekend? Wow. I would let you sit in the car and start it up. Like, I mean, seriously, it's crazy. Yeah, I think, I think, yeah, that's it. Eight grand buys your practice session, doesn't yeah, it? Exactly. It might cost eight grand to do FP1 for us. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, that's it's it's mad. I, ne yeah. I never, but, but, you know, I never thought I'd see the day when we were doing 24 races in a season. I never thought I'd see the day yeah. when we went to America and people are stopped in the streets and cannot walk. And, yeah. you know, and we, you experienced it, man. You were there. You saw it. Yeah. And you just said, you said, I want to come to Austin. I want to see what F1 is like in the Netflix era. And literally yeah. after the first day, you just looked at me and went, dude, this is wild. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's changed. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, man, I know you have to go and do uh, other things because you're famous and do Netflix <laughs> stuff now, but um, <laughs> we appreciate your time. Uh, I really man. wanted to get this uh, for our community because this is a growing community. And obviously, Dale Earnhardt Jr., he owns us. He's our boss. Um, and so he likes, you know, to have a bit of a, you know, an open wheel look at at, at things and, and some great, great knowledge. So I appreciate oh, uh, you and man, appreciate pleasure. what you do. Thank you, buddy. Well, look, you know, you know me, you know, I I love IndyCar. It, it is to me just such pure, beautiful racing. I have the utmost respect for the teams, the drivers, for everyone in that paddock that makes the sport what it is for Roger, for, you know, what he's done in, in buying the sport and taking it onto its next generation, the hugest of respects. And I just, all I want is, is for it to be as big as, as it can be for you guys to be appreciated <laughs> and stellified around the world as the incredible race drivers that you are. I want people in the UK to talk about IndyCar the way they talk about Formula One. You know, I want it to be what we talk about on a Monday morning. It's uh, it's a phenomenal racing championship that that has had my heart for a long time, as you know, mate. So um, <laughs> thanks for having me on. No worries. We could talk about it for hours, I swear. I know, thank man. You. I, know, uh, I know. Will Buxton, everyone. All right. Incredible interview there with Will. Um, just a great guy overall. I mean, such a fan of of our sport, IndyCar, such a fan of motor racing in general. I mean, the guy, you know, the guy is traveling the world all the time, still knows what's going on in NASCAR, still knows what's going on in IndyCar. I mean, if there's one thing that we I, I think that we really like to do in this show is that we can we, we want 
everyone to be able to consume all motorsport. You know what I mean? Like it, it, there's, we don't want to put up the boundaries between the series. We we want to be able to be like, hey, we're we're race fans. Like, yeah, we might prefer Formula One. Everyone's got their preference. I, I prefer IndyCar. You know what I mean? But I love NASCAR. And, and, and like, I've I've now raced in NASCAR. You know what I mean? Big NASCAR I actually guy. saw. I'm a big NASCAR guy. I actually saw Chris Busher at the airport just yesterday. I, we, we were in the Dallas airport uh, connecting. I was going back home. He was going out to SEMA. And I, I, to be fair, I have never met Chris Busher before, but he's been on the download, right? And so, like, mm-hmm. I, I went up to him. I said, "Hey, man, like, has like just I, I'm Connor. Uh, I just uh, crazy weekend. Uh, what do you think about Ross's move? <laughs> you know what I mean? And it was just, it was, it was nice to talk to you know Chris about that. And and again, it's something that uh, I, I, I love that there is, you know, a, a good mutual respect between drivers of different series. I think. Even, you know, the, the Formula One guys to the IndyCar guys to the NASCAR guys. I just wish there was more of that with with all the people who are consuming motorsports. So, again, we encourage you to watch it all. If you can watch one, you know, use the one that you, you know, use the one that you prefer. But, hey, maybe sometime give, you know, give another one a chance and see what you think. So, uh, great interview with with Will. Um, and and I guess, uh, yeah, I mean, what did you think of it, Ben? I, I, I think exciting to just get pick his brain on things oh well we could have talked to him for an hour yeah he's one of my favorite personalities in f1 like hands down and again (laughs) like you said his knowledge about indycar obviously f1 nascar how he keeps up to date and his insight on everything and just talking about even just the social marketing side and digital stuff and how they do everything f1 tv is just fantastic and i think indycar and i think nascar to a certain extent can learn from that too so very impressed with that yeah, I mean, it, it just goes to show you. I mean, he 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 talked about the investment that was made. You know what I mean? And 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 I think that's the overarching, you know, the overarching thing that we always kind of talk about is like, hey, it might take something. You know what I mean? And 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 it's not like we're, you know, we're not we're not relying on on uh, you know a small ownership group. You know, we have Roger Penske, who is a you know he is a not a poor individual, and 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 the entertainment group. You know, there's a lot of great people there and, and, and I just hope that, you know, they, they see what a lot of people are saying, you know what I mean? Because I think right now we, 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 we can't be, we can't be dormant. We can't be um, ignoring what's going on around us because that strategy doesn't work. And, and, and it's, it's something that we all want to work together to be a better sport. We all want to work together to to get to a better place. And again, I probably sound like a broken record, but it, it's just something that when we talk to more and more people, it, the, the 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 situation is always the same. Everyone loves IndyCar. It's just we don't know where to watch it or how to watch it or how to consume it. Right. You know what I mean? And and it, we just have to make people want to do that, and we have to make people aware that we're there. So great conversation. Um, to get to a little bit of IndyCar news, I know we didn't talk about a ton of IndyCar stuff, but. Uh, Tony Kanan, his his deal was officially announced with with McLaren as a fourth car. I uh, spoke to Tony on the phone yesterday. Uh, I had a question about Twitch streaming for him, and I said, "I know you're busy because you just announced your 875th Indy 500, <laughs> but uh, please, you know, let me know blah, 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 on this." And so we had a nice chat. Um, interesting move for McLaren. I, I, they could have gone with someone for the hype, but they went with a very experienced, talented guy who, no matter what. Doesn't matter where he starts. Doesn't matter how the race goes. He's probably going to be in the top top ten at the end of the race, or or be there. Certainly, I mean, he was heck. He was in front of me at the end of the race this year, and I had no idea how that happened. Um, and again, Tony is not going to just drive that race for for anybody. I mean, he goes from Ganassi, who obviously won the race last year, to McLaren, who finished second and third in the race, second and fourth in the race. Like you know, a team that is, is going to be, you know, a team that is probably spending the most money of anyone on, on the, you know, on their program right now. Um, so Tony count Tony in with a shot at winning a, a second Indy 500. Um, love to see that for the sport. Uh, there was also an interesting article that I just saw posted about 45, 50 minutes ago. Marathi Autosport launches crowdfunding effort for spirit of speedway Indy 500 entry. Now I've seen this before it's painted on a wall uh, on Main Street in Speedway, Indiana, I think, and I, I, I love that idea. People have tried it before, but it's it's a tough, tough ask. It, it, it's not 
we're not trying to raise 300 grand to go Indy 500 racing now. Like you're, you're trying to raise upwards of 750 grand. And if you're trying to run it by yourself, it's a tough game. I mean, if, if seeing all that goes into making these cars go faster around that speedway, seeing what RC Enerson, my good friend had to deal with a couple years ago, trying to make the race with top gun racing. Uh, it's just, it's hard. I mean, I, I respect it. That's what the Indy 500 was all about trying to show up and qualify. Um, but you know, if this year is, uh, you know, if there's thir more than 33 cars trying to qualify and one and, and, and they happen to raise enough money, uh, that that'll be a tough one. So again, I, I hope that they do. I, I, I hope that they do. I love a crowdfunding effort, but again, our sport, I think right now it doesn't have that type of hype around it to be like, well, we're going to help crowdfund this effort because again, we don't know about this. We don't, we don't know who's involved. You know, you have to hire people. You have to get a car. You have to, it's, it, it's just, it's, uh, it, it's tough. It's tough to remain legitimate when you're a crowdfunded entry. You know what I mean? Cause right. you're like, that's awesome. That would be great. We all love that. Like I love a good GoFundMe, but like this is a top sport in the world. You know what I mean? You're not going to see Red Bull racing and formula one crowdfunding and you know, an effort like it's just, you're not, I don't even think you see it in the cup series. I don't even think no. you see it in the Xfinity series. I mean, it's, it's just something that you got to stay at a certain level of, 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 you know, sporting. And again, wish them all the best. If they get the right donors, awesome. Then they become a team, but that's a wild, that's tough. And, and again, I wish them all the best, but that is what it is. So mm -hmm. that's what's going on IndyCar wise right now. Uh, we, you know, a bit, a bit of a, a long show today, but a good show. Uh, we're wishing Joey all the best. We're going to get to our, well, my, one of my, well, my, which we don't really have a lot of segments, but I, I like this segment a lot. Um, we're going to go with the, uh, random Indy 500 driver of the week, the, uh, Ricky Treadway random Indy 500 driver of the week. Um, I asked, uh, Ben here to pick the year and because he's a child, he picked 1999. Uh, and I, which is fine. Cause I was alive for this race. I was there uh, a lot of big names in this race. Uh, one of my good friends, Robbie McGee finished in the top five. Great, great human being. Uh, used to play Xbox with him a lot. Uh, Kenny Brack, obviously the winner fellow countryman of Marcus Erickson. Um, but who we're going with. And I, again, this is probably not random for a lot of people. Um, but if folks who might be new to IndyCar folks who might be new to our show, um, this is a guy that I cheered for because he had a cool name and like, I liked his car, uh, always a red car, Buzz Calkins, Buzz Calkins finished 19th, uh, in 1999, uh, Buzz Calkins was around for basically a lot of my growing up era. Um, he had 53 IndyCar starts. Uh, he had one win, three podiums. Um, he's currently 51. Uh, if, if Wikipedia is correct. Um, but, uh, but yeah, competitive driver, I, I, you, you could always, I mean, you know, having a win in podiums, like that's, that's really good stuff. So, uh, several Indy 500s, 96 through basically 2001. Um, and yeah, I, I always remember Buzz Calkins, you know, and, and, and Bradley Motorsports always remember that. Um, it was something that for some reason in my childhood, I remember Buzz Calkins. So uh, we want to uh, give him the respect that he deserves in the random Indy 500 driver of the week uh, segment. So any final words from you, Ben? Are we are we excited about uh, Dale Jr.'s uh, fire merch for his Bass Pro Shops? New yeah, deal that was announced I Because that. I want to was... buy one of those shirts. Yeah, I do too. I think I'm going to be doing the same. That's really cool. One of the greatest um, shirts of all time. Yeah, the fish on there. I think I'll, oh. I'm assuming Ryan Williams, um, JRM graphic designer, does a lot of their paint schemes. Did that, so he always does a fantastic job with that. Um, we got NASCAR championship this weekend. Um, Cobb Xfinity truck finishing out that. Um, other racing wise, not really a whole lot going on. But make sure follow us Speed Street Pod Instagram Twitter. I'm gonna be starting up a TikTok for us soon so stay oh that. wow TikTok. We got, we're tiktok yes, people now big tiktok people um we got merch go to dirtymomedia.com um speed street search or if you're here in north carolina go to the jrm shop and pick up those there you go that's what we're talking about great show today um appreciate everyone listening 
Uh, we will be back next week with more exciting uh, things to talk about. So thank you, everyone. And uh, we'll see you next week out here on Speed Street.